Your Honor, first thing I'd like to say is that I am innocent of these killings. I did not commit any of these murders that I was found guilty of. I feel that nothing here has been proven. There's been a lot of lies, a lot of deceptions, deceiving the people of the Bronx. I'm innocent of these crimes. Thank you, Your Honor. How do you do? Good to see you. Come on, sit down. Uh, if you just sit here to start with, please. Thank you. Look at the camera or look at the This man is one of America's most notorious serial killers. He was convicted of three murders and suspected of more. But he proclaims he's innocent. Alex and Enrique grew up like hundreds of thousands of other people did in the Bronx, but they didn't turn into serial killers. He is a psychopath first before he's anything else. Enriquez admits he did know all the victims. One was just 10 years old. All I know is that I just wish my friend was here. <laughs> I have not killed anybody in my life. And I don't think I ever will. But there was no hard evidence. I thought maybe they had the wrong person, because the person to do this type of crimes really didn't fit the person that was sitting there. Alejandro Enriquez, a serial killer. Alex Enriquez. Enriquez. Alejandro Enriquez. Alex Enriquez. I remember feeling that I wanted to spit on him, that I wanted to attack him. My heart bled black. Having refused interviews for almost 30 years, Alex Enriquez is now ready to tell his side of the story. He comes at you from every angle, and you must take your time, and you must let him talk. Because the more he talks, the more mistakes he may make. Jessica Guzman was just 10 years old when one afternoon in October 1990, she headed down to her local supermarket and never came home. Jessica was the youngest of three girls, murdered in a tight-knit community in the Bronx. Suspicion fell on Alex Enriquez, the last person to have seen Jessica alive. The last time I seen her, she was headed in that direction. May I so rest in peace. A highly publicized case involving little Jessica disappeared near her home and was found a week later by the side of the Bronx River Parkway, suffocated. 2,000 mourners turned out for services in the Bronx, including Mayor Dinkins and other top officials. It was the death of this 10-year-old girl that captured the nation's attention. Her coffin was covered in a flag sent by the president. A serial killer had terrorized this neighborhood for two years. But now, the police were under huge pressure to catch him. So, Elvin, what do we know about Jessica? She's a normal, regular little girl, 10-year-old girl. When she wasn't found in a few days, we knew we were defeated before we even got started, because she was already not with us any longer. At the very least, her death stopped this maniac from killing more. Her death caused a big, huge investigation to be pursued. And in so doing, other, other uh, homicides, victims, came into play. And then it turned out that Alex was the common denominator of all these unfortunate homicides. When you have a conscience and you, it's tough to live if you have a conscience. He, he's lived a long time without a conscience. Hopefully he'll never dare or never be able to get out and do this to anybody else. Nearly there. Sorry for the delay. No, it takes, uh, takes all the time in the world. Yeah, right? exactly, yeah. <laughs> huh. 
all I've been able to find out about Enriquez is that no one in his community ever thought he could be a serial killer. He grew up in the Bronx, was married, had children, and ran a cab company. Since his time in prison, he's married again. Alex, you've been incarcerated for 28 years for crimes that you adamantly insist you did not commit. What kind of person were you before you were convicted? Well, I was a father, I was a, a son, I was a brother, and I was a husband. Was I perfect? Far from it. Uh, was I an angel? Far from it. What were your imperfections? <laughs> It's sad and, and embarrassing to say, um, I was married and I had a lot of girlfriends. That was my, my biggest, I guess, problem. But it was just that, I guess, as a man, I did things I wasn't supposed to do. I was with this girl, that girl, that girl. And, and you lived the lifestyle I lived. You know, you have a nice car, you dress nice clothing. Women attract to that. It's, a, it's like a magnet. And I, I don't like guys, I like women. So it was, you know, it went with the... Uh, the women found you magnetic? Um, I guess so, if I had them. I, I didn't, you know, pay anybody or force anybody. So I guess they must have liked me. Most people who are convicted of killing children get targeted in prison. Have you had that? Um, no, you hear comments. Is that, there's a lot of worse crimes in here. Well, but Alex, I mean, you're, you're convicted of killing three very young people. One was 10, one was 14, one was 21. What could be, what could be worse? To me, there's nothing worse than taking a child's life, an innocent child's life. When I see something on TV that something happened to a child, I always sort of like get emotional. My eyes get watery because I say, wow, that's what they're accusing me of. So it's, uh, it's not a nice thing. Two kids went missing in the Bronx and that's when I first heard the name Alejandro Enriquez because he was the last person seen with them. Shortly after that, there was another missing person. This was Jessica Guzman. When she went missing, we said, well, who was with the what? One of the housing detectives said, yeah, there was a guy, Alexander Henriquez. Despite his declaration of innocence, suspicion has swirled around Alex Henriquez for some time, but until now, not enough evidence. There seems to be the impression, at least, that people who know you, especially if they're young, don't live long. Well, um, you say that, but I must be a magician then. I can't be in two places at one time. When he was arrested, I was very scared they were blaming the wrong guy. Everything I was hearing of what he did to each girl, to me, it, it was just, had to be a monster, and this is not what I was seeing. I remember meeting him. I dropped off Jesse to her friend's house. He was cleaning the car in front of the house, and Jesse told me, Mom, this is Christina's dad. Are you capable of hurting a child? Am I capable of hurting a child? Uh, no. Why would I want to hurt a child? Because I have children. And How many do you have? I have two girls. Yeah. Ironically, my second daughter is called Jessica. It's the same exact name as the girl, one of the girls they accused me of killing. And um, I really can't express the pain I feel when I hear that. Let me just get some pictures of the, so that our viewers know what we're talking about here. 
These are the, the three girls. So Shamira was the first to die, then Lisa, and then Jessica. Did you kill these people? No, I didn't. I never, listen to me carefully, I've never taken anyone's life, not even an animal, never. What the police told me about this interview, because I said, uh, you know, what do you think will, will happen? How will it play out? Because I don't know you. Mm -hmm. And they said he will have an answer for everything. He will bamboozle you with all sorts of information. He'll try and manipulate you. He'll lie to you. He'll play you. He'll try and play you. He'll try and outwit you. He's a smart guy. That's their job. Right. Their job is to make you believe that I am the killer. Most psychopaths have very positive self-images. They look at their reflection and in the mirror and the, in the sheet of glass, and they really like what they see. And they're convinced that their stuff doesn't stink. And they'll go out and tell anybody what they want to hear, as long as in the long run it benefits the person, him or herself. Enrique says the police, facing a public outcry, desperately needed a scapegoat. And he was it. Mr. and Mrs. Rodriguez. I have no anger to the families for what they're saying or what they think of me because they have been misled and they have been deceived. I can never understand why when they come here and lie to you. It's a lie. She's lying. She's lying. Everybody lies with you, right, Annie? Everybody with you. I'm innocent. I'm innocent. He's crying. He's crying. I'm innocent. I'm innocent. He's murdered. He's murdered. I have no anger to the family. There have been suggestions, and you can perhaps clarify this, that you may have suffered some form of abuse, sexual abuse or otherwise, when you were younger. Is that true? No. Nothing like that? Never. My parents took care of me. I went to the best schools. I had everything. Neither of your parents are alive, is that right? They passed away, yes. While you were in prison? My dad passed away first, and my dear mother passed away March 11th, 2017. What was your relationship like with your mother? <laughs> Beautiful. Did she ever ask you if you did the killings? Um, no, she never asked me. Did she believe in you to the end? Oh, yes. Yes. Do you accept that whoever killed these, these girls is a despicable human being? Yes, sir. Somebody who would take three young lies and snuff them out? Without, without a question. Ruin every dream for them, for their families? Of course. In Lisa's case, her parents have never altered the room that, that she was last in 30 years ago. They go and sleep in there sometimes for comfort. Their lives are ruined too. How can you ever recover from a, tra a tragedy like that? An ugly tragedy. There's no recovery. This is Lisa's room, almost exactly the way she left it. Gives me a lot of comfort to, to just be in her room and sleep in her room. I feel like I have her still in my heart and that she's with us here. And I could just hear her now saying, Mama, I love you, you know? We had just got a new medical examiner. He came up with something that we had never used before as a cause of death, homicidal asphyxia. Uh, we'd use strangulation or suffocation and things like that. But it appears that he held them so tight that they couldn't breathe. And that's a slow way to go.
Lisa was 21, and the oldest of the three girls, Alex Enriquez, was convicted of killing. But the police had little to link him to the murder. A pair of his wife's pink sweatpants recovered at the crime scene. And, crucially, a witness who could place Alex and Lisa together. At the time, he was living here with his wife. One day, Alex and Lisa were standing out front. They were basically sitting like or leaning against a car. I guess it was his car. And he introduced Lisa as his niece. And we talked for a bit and he said he called her a cab. And I found that kind of ironic because he is a cab driver. But at anyhow, he waited and they were waiting for a very long time and the cab never came. She wanted to go home, obviously, but he wasn't taking her. She looked very young. I had no reason to believe that that wasn't his niece. In Lisa's case, you say that you had a sexual relationship with her. Yes, I did. Please understand, I don't want to offend the victim's families. And that's the key. Because they've been hurt enough. Um, we would just go out. She'll call me. I'll call her. And we'll go out. She wasn't, per se, my girlfriend, because she had a boyfriend. How many times did you have sex with her, do you think? I don't remember. I wasn't. Well, I'm, I'm, to I'm, be exact, I, I couldn't tell you. I wasn't keeping notes of this. One but of the I'm, key pieces of evidence in that, in that instance was that she was found wearing your wife's pink sweatpants. How, how do you explain that? Well, I remember when we came from the beach that she was, uh, her clothes were, had sand and oil. And she said, do I have any, do I have anything to wear? I said, I don't have anything that'll fit you. And then I gave her a pair of sweatpants that were I found in a drawer. And hey, your wife's? I, this is the, the crate, I, I'm assuming they're hers. She was found dead in those pants. I gave her a pair of pants. Were those, those pants? Alex, she was found dead wearing those pants. That's oh, why. I understand what you're saying, I heard you. So if you now concede you gave them to her and she's found dead in them, quite obviously people are gonna think, well, what happened? Okay, I said, let's say hmm. I gave her the pants. Let's say she was found dead in the pants. Mm. Why would that say that I killed her? Did someone see me kill her? Did they find physical evidence to say that, you know, I perpetrated the crime of murder? No, it was a witch hunt. It was, okay, we have this here, and we have this here, and we have this here. We put it all together, we make him look like the murderer. The defense tried to build a picture of this man having some kind of relationship with Lisa. Did you believe any of that? No. Not, not that he had, he was, you know, that they were having, having any kind of, of relationship, no. You know, she would have told us. She would have, you know, mentioned him, which she never did. And... Uh, were you aware of him at all? No. No. Maybe what happened was that she called him because he was a cab service. Mm. She knew him, but only as, as a cab service, and it's not like they were dating or anything like that. But the fact that he appears to have given Lisa some sweatpants, which came from his own wife, seems such a strange detail in those. Have you ever been able to think about how that could have happened? The only thing we can figure out is that he killed her at that moment, and he undressed her, and, and that's how she ended up with his clothes. But otherwise, no. The truth is, 
We don't know what to believe with this guy. No. 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 And Chicky, what are your feelings towards Alex Enriquez? I can't even begin to tell you how much. I hate that. He took our daughter from us. I understand. I understand. Yeah. It's heartbreaking yes. to talk to you and to see the pictures and to have to relive this with you. I'm so sorry for what you both have had to go through. Lisa, like all the murder victims, lived within two miles of Enriquez's home. His cab service operated right in the heart of a neighborhood. It was a common occurrence for those kids to be walking on the street and the parents say, yeah, sometimes uh, he takes them home if he's driving past in the car or something. They didn't have any suspicion about him at all. Police believed he killed more than three girls, but couldn't prove it. The community has lost six young people during the past four years, and many believe a single killer is to blame. Children are disappearing from all over the place. Still got to find the person that did this. If we don't find them, they're going to do it again and again and again. Bodies are being dumped in our neighborhood, and it doesn't seem like City Hall is getting off their rear ends to say, no more. All the victims had a link to a man who has lived and operated right in the middle of the area where the bodies have been found. Uh, everybody that comes here that knows and says, he did it, he did it. Everybody, all the drivers that know, because that guy, is, uh, he's sick. The police say there were no similar deaths once you had been imprisoned in that area of the Bronx. That's what they say. There were but no I more have, girls snatched off the street. I have and it's 68. Of otherwise. No one? Okay. You remember? Um, I don't know if you might, probably you don't remember. There was a girl they called Baby Hope. Mm hmm. I know that story. Very similar. Mm -hmm. um, Please I, say it bore no relation to the death scene. I know it. It's You're, a very it different had, modus operandi. But what I'm saying... There's a particular modus operandi for all these deaths. Like which one? Can you explain? All three of them were but, taken uh, off these particular streets in a two-mile radius and killed in the same manner. And how did um, Baby Hope the, die? The police say it was different circumstances. No, it was asphyxiation, like they were killed, according to what the police said. So, in the side of the road... Let me ask you this, Alex. Even if you had killed him, you wouldn't tell me, would you? If I would have killed him, I would have played guilty from day one. Would you? Yes. You'd have admitted to being a, a triple child killer. It would, obviously, there would be something wrong with me. I needed help. Do you think there is something wrong with you? Uh, yeah, I'm innocent. Been innocent from day one. I, listen, I'm here because, first of all, you're not paying me for right. any in, in the interview. I'm not here because I want to meet you. I'm here because I need to present the evidence. Mm. Um, because, again, let's go back to the fact that I con, liar, cheat, whatever you want to call me. Fine. That has nothing to do with taking three innocent lives. It's no, like, what it does. It's like. Well, here's what it does. Here's the problem for you. It makes it very hard to believe you about no, anything. But I need you to Your understand. body language to me. I'm not an expert, but every time you've got overly defensive, your arms go like this, I'm and it's... No, that's, that's another thing. I'm relaxed like this, I'm relaxed. I get tired of keeping my hands, so I put them here. It's a very defensive thing to do. Is it? Yeah. I don't know nothing about body language. I, I would say it is. I've only noticed it the time I've been with you. OK, well, let's take it another step. We're just... I think we've got a slight tape. Sorry. Just running out of battery. Sorry. Okay. Alex, just give us one moment. Thank you very much. For the last two hours, I've been struggling to get under the skin of Alex Enriquez. Oh, I have my hands crossed. He's not here. <laughs> I want to know what lurks beneath his cool, calm exterior. One of the first days that I, I met him, my partner made a remark to him. 
And out of a clear blue sky, he, Alex got so insulted, he lost his cool. And he jumped at my partner and he said, you're a liar! And at that point, I saw with Alex, like you pressed the button, and he went off. We showed my interview to James Fitzgerald, an FBI legend. He caught the infamous Unabomber, ending a 20-year manhunt. Ted Kaczynski injured 24 people and killed three others. For decades, he was one of the most wanted criminals in the US. Are you capable of hurting a child? Am I capable of hurting a child? Uh, no. Why would I want to hurt a child? Most people would say, no, of course not. He hesitated for actually a few seconds. Then his first reply was, am I capable of hurting a child? He puts the question back to peers in so many words. And then, of course, he sort of denies it and plays off that whole scenario from there. But why not just come out and say, no, I would never do that? Even with a psychopath, the lying syntaxes have to get aligned with one another to make sure that the proper lie comes out at the proper time. Psychopaths like control. They don't want to be controlled, they want to control others. To them, it just makes sense because it's what got them this far in life in sort of a successful method of surviving. Please, Mr. Morgan, I allow you to ask me any questions you want because I have nothing to hide. But it's very important that you let me explain why I'm innocent. See, I have to decide, Alex, are you, are you just a guy in prison now as an innocent man? Or am I looking at somebody who did do that? In which case, you're one of the worst people I've ever met in my life. OK. And I can understand that, because anyone who would commit them atrocious crimes would have to be the worst person you can ever meet. Owen, do you think that Alex Enriquez planned these killings meticulously, or were they spontaneous acts? I'd say it could be a little of both, some of both. And the reason I say it is because um, there may be much more to Alex than I ever knew about or thought about. I may have thought about it, but the, I couldn't put it together. He seemed to deal with people that he knew were sort of beneath him, or he could charm, or he could con. Alejandro was the guy that killed her. He was telling her stories that he had a horse in one of the horse stables in the Bronx, and that's how he coerced her to, you know, be interested in hanging out. You know, we teach our kids that you don't take things from strangers, but he wasn't really a stranger to them because he saw them in the neighborhood. He was friendly, give them candy, you know, and little by little, he gained their trust. They said she was decomposed, found in a black, in a black garbage bag, decomposed, leaning on a tree. 11 years, we buried on her 11th birthday, on her 11th birthday, October 20th, 1990. Police had no hard evidence to connect Enriquez to Jessica's murder. But during interrogation, they say he made a vital mistake. He told them a detail only the killer could have known. With, with Jessica, with the evidence you gave about the particular floral design on her... The what? The, floor, the flower design okay. on her under, underwear. The police didn't know that because they hadn't cleaned her underwear. After you said that, they went and cleaned the heavily decomposed and filthy, dirty garment, and they found that, yes, it was floral. They didn't know that. You had told them that. Uh... I don't know if that's true. That is true. Oh, well, that's what they said to you? That's the truth. So then how did they, how do I know certain things? And this is one of the reasons that... Well, Alex, it's obvious why... I, can't, we, I only know the pictures. If Alex, I it's obvious why you would know. How? 
If you killed her, you'd know. Okay. If they showed me the pictures. Pictures the undergarment hadn't been cleaned. They didn't show me pictures of the oven, the undergarment. They told they, me. You just said they showed you they pictures. They showed me pictures. Well, Alex, either showed you pictures or they didn't. No, no. They showed me Did pictures. Did they show you pictures or not? They showed me pictures of the crime scene, the bodies. You gave them a particular piece of because information. Because they told me. But they did not know. How could they tell you something they didn't know? That's what they tell you. They hadn't you. cleaned the garment. So they're lying too. <laughs> Do you really think they said the truth? I'll tell you a little bit of what the police told me in the interrogation room. You're an animal. Look what you did. What, did you have sex with this little baby girl with little flower panties and training bra? What, you ripped it off? Did you cut it off? What'd you do it with a knife? What knife did you use? Did you use scissors? They'll say anything to try to break you down. And because I didn't do anything, they couldn't break me. Well, all I can recall in that is that when the panties were re-examined, that's when it was noted, the color and the description. Uh, because at the time of the, uh, when the body was found, uh, there was a lot of discoloration from the elements, etc. Only the person involved could know such detail. I never wanted the wrong person in jail. I never wanted to bring a case into court that would crumble. The fact that he kept going after these young girls is a clue that maybe his peer relationships, his sexual activities with women around his own age, weren't going quite the way he would have liked. He quite frankly may not have been able to perform at times with them. So what he would wind up doing is regressing uh, in his own psychosexual way to these younger women, these children, in a sense. And, uh, and that's somehow how he would gain control over them and satisfy those needs of his. This guy got in touch with us. He said, hey, I was driving up the Bronx River Parkway that night. I saw a car, he says, and there was a guy standing by the trunk. I pulled over and I yelled to him in Spanish, hey, do you need help? He says the guy was very rude. He yelled, get out of here, I don't need any help. He says, oh, okay, you know. By this time we had a photo array up and we showed it to uh, the guy and he picked Alex right out of the photo array. He says, that was the guy that was parked and he was parked 10 feet from where the body was discovered maybe. Let's go back to the evidence. What does the evidence say? You have a guy who said he's seen me and spoke to me at the crime scene. Well, let's come to that. I so never this, spoke to this guy. This man says he saw you there in the early hours after the death of Jessica. He says he saw you there. Do you believe that? Have you seen? You, you tell me, were you there? No, I wasn't there. Mr. Morgan, if I was a murderer, a killer, who killed three innocent... A serial killer is what you're accusing. Serial killer, whatever you want to call it. And a man pulls up to me, and I just finished killing somebody. Don't you think he would have been my next victim? I want you to think about that for a second. He can put me at the crime scene. He can pinpoint me that I was there. Mr. Morgan, I'm not trying to con you or anyone. I understand that your job is to try to discredit me as much as you can. No. No, no, let me finish. Not. Let me finish. I don't have it. My only job is to interview you. Please. And to try and ascertain in my mind whether I think you killed these girls or not. Well, how could you ascertain that if you don't let me explain? Because I find that the way that you have tried to deflect on all, every aspect of what links you to these killings, I mean, it's been masterful deflection, but that's what it's been, deflection. So I'm masterful now? I think you're a masterful liar, yeah. Okay, well. But you were by your own okay, admission. I'm a, I'm a liar. Does that make me a murderer? Not only does Enriquez admit to being a liar, but he's also been convicted before of another crime. How will he react when I question him about this shocking incident 
that landed him in prison. Some people, Alex, when they've been in prison for a very long time, they think so much about... Think so much of what? About why they're here. Oh. That they start to believe their own story. No, I believed it from day one. If you see the, um, the court TV mm -hmm. thing, I was very adamant that I didn't do anything. But you were very plausible. I didn't do anything you, from I, day I've one. I've watched it. I've watched that video. And I didn't do anything now. And... There's nothing anyone can tell me. What do you say to the families suffering so much from the deaths of their loved ones? What do I say? Um, look for the truth. At trial, the defense argued all the evidence was circumstantial. He is an accused serial killer, but Alejandro Enriquez remains composed as his murder trial enters its third week. They only had one thing in common. They all knew Alejandro Enriquez. His attorney says the DA has a weak case based on circumstantial evidence. People were so mad and so angry. And the police had to do something. The evidence in this case is weak and unreliable circumstantial evidence. I did not commit any of these murders that I was found guilty of. I feel that nothing here has been proven there's been a lot of lies, a lot of deceptions. I found it uh, interesting that Enrique, on one of the most critical points in his life, being convicted of three separate homicides, he has his moment to shine. The, the, the acting skills this person possessed would be you know, worthy of an Academy Award. He knew how to frame these storylines together to show a little bit of pity towards the family, but he didn't mean that at all. It was all about preserving himself and to save his own butt. I have no anger for the families for what they're saying or what they think of me because they have been misled and they have been deceived. And now he's on the stage for the first time in years exhibiting his best psychopathic skill sets. I keep calling him a gentleman. I don't know why, but that's the way I was brought up. But this piece of garbage He's always there, he's always around where things happen. You know, you say coincidence. Coincidence happens every once in a while. Everybody in that jury room knows that he did it, and he knows that he did it. There was no other person that could have done it but him. Owen, do you have any doubt that Alex Enriquez is guilty of the crimes he committed? No doubt. One, and I say they convicted him, and I'm satisfied with that. If he, they hadn't convicted him, that case still would have been in my crawl. When you see video footage of Enriquez from that courtroom, he doesn't look like a serial killer capable of choking the life out of three young girls who knew him and trusted him. But there is one shocking incident that happened before the murders that shows beyond doubt he is capable of cruelty to children. How do you explain at the time that you were charged with these offences, mm -hmm. you were convicted of scolding a young boy who was mm -hmm. the son of your Okay. Wife. I and wasn't severely I, scolding him so much you ended up with a quite lengthy prison sentence. When you say that I scolded and that I was convicted, mm. um, those are key words. And but those are facts, aren't they? No, they're not. You it's weren't a, convicted. I pled guilty to Assault. leaving him alone in the bathroom mm. and mm. to a lesser charge because. What was the lesser charge? It's an e felony, um, assault. I don't want to just say something that's not true. I didn't think he was going to get burnt, though. I wouldn't have left him in there. I was preparing him to take him to his father. Do you think I would intentionally scold him, put his clothes on, and take him to his father? 
That doesn't make too much sense. Yeah, but Alex, at the very best, it's appalling negligence by you because you were the adult in charge of it. Exactly. That's at the very best, but that's not what you pleaded guilty to. You didn't plead guilty to negligence, you pleaded guilty to assault. They, their whole thing was this. They needed to make me look bad to the public as much as they could. When, so a, boy, that, when a boy of that age gets that badly schooled, that's bad. I'm going to make it look bad. It's bad. Mr. Morgan, this interview is not about me lying, me cheating, me uh, fornicating. It has nothing to do no, with this. This is about whether you killed okay, these three women. So let's stick to the evidence mm. of these three women. I'm asking you, please. This is what we're here for. If you want to, you called me a liar. You say you think I'm guilty. I know you're a liar. I want you, I want you I know to. You're a liar. You I said want you're you, a liar. But I'm not a murderer. Because I lie doesn't I'm make I'm going to believe you, and I don't believe you. Because okay. why should anyone believe you? To satisfy if you're right or wrong, I mean, I don't know if you do care. Get the crime scene video. I care about these Get the girls crime scene video. And the lives they never had. And look at the picture. And the families whose lives have been destroyed. That's what I care about. My life has been destroyed. My family's life's been destroyed. But yet I'm innocent, and I'm in here. It's 28 years. And it's. We tend to overlook the evidence. Alex, we're going around in houses. The viewers can make their own minds up whether they believe you or not. We have to leave it there. OK. You've had a chance to put your say. No, I didn't have a chance. You, you spoke, and when I try to give you the evidence to show you otherwise, you interrupted me, and now we have to go. OK. Thank you for your time. We're good. All right. Well done. All right. It can be frustrating talking to anyone who is just locked into their lie, locked into their story. You'd be the rare guy that broke a psychopath after 28 to 30 years. But Piers held his own, stuck to his guns, and that's what you got to do with these guys. Enrique is the poster boy for a lying psychopath who lacks remorse and empathy. I'm enjoying the fact to know that I'm hoping you live to 99. Because he was a player, multiple personalities. To this day, I meet somebody that knows him, you know, that knew him. He was only 29 years old, right? Something around there. Young guy, drove a Mercedes, always is suited up. He needs the reaction from other people in order to feel successful, to feel complete. So for him to be in a box by himself, it makes me feel better. For a while, I just thought I was a very bad judge of character. But what I realized is that I was just fooled. You know, I just didn't see the real person. Thank you very good. Thank you, Morgan. Thank you. When they read the verdict, I just looked over at Jessica's mother, and I was like, I gave you what you needed. I gave her what she needed to hear. The court imposes an indeterminate sentence, the maximum of which shall be for the term of your natural life. <laughs>